What's going on, my wonderful Broken Army, my Hoodoo family, Broken Prophet here. Welcome back to the vlog. Here's hoping that you're, like, we getting close to the weekend, y'all. And I figure, hey, I'm spoil y'all again with another couple of stories. These are going to be short. Um, some of you, you know, a lot of you like the Hoodoo Story series. Some of you are like, why are you telling so many stories? Well, the reason I'm telling so many stories, to show you that that is how a lot of the elders in hoodoo talked see it wasn't they're gonna sit you down and this is this and that is that and here we're gonna write a paper here read read this book no it's just a bunch of old folks sitting around telling stories and that did two things one shoot the stories were great so i, I sat there and listened but also also it, it, it helped to build that relationship it showed them that, hey, I'm interested enough to actually pay attention, but it also kept my brain meets on, on their game because it wasn't no taking notes. You sitting there, you got to pay attention. So y'all getting it good because y'all can replay the video. <laughs> it wasn't like that. So that's just how a lot of, you know, I was taught a lot of ways that way. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> that's just the way I was taught a lot of times. So, and I enjoy telling stories and just, you know, recanting stuff, you know, memory is our only means of time travel. It takes us back to, you know, good places. So that's it. And also guys, thank y'all so much for, um, for signing up for the upcoming webinar. Um, the art of controlling and compelling with who do webinars going to be this upcoming Tuesday Ten dollars information is going to be down in the comment section. And while you're down there, hit that thumbs up and make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon. Anyway, now that I've got that out of the way, let's get into story number one. This is the one that I told you guys I was going to tell you last video about the time I got almost got hemmed up in a cemetery. Now, this wasn't a planned trip. <clears throat> Let me tell you all what happened. So I was doing a live. This happened like two or three years ago. I was doing a live. And during the course of the live, I think I said something along the lines of, I think, you know, I, I should have a, a hoodoo get together this weekend. It was it was totally non-committal. I just said something along the lines of I should put something together. <clears throat> so I'm um, I'm at home, Hoodoo Central One. <laughs> and like the, my doorbell rang, then the knock. And I'm like, oh, is that the police? <laughs> And open the door, and there's this lady standing there. She's like, hey, I'm, I'm here for the gathering. And I'm like, what in the? What? The, what? <laughs> she, she showed up, pulled up. And you know who you are. And hey, haven't heard from you for, from, for a while. But, you know, we still, you're still cool with me. But, yeah, lady showed up. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing anything tonight, but. Like, where did you come from? She she had driven from like another state. I'm like, okay, tell you what, come back tomorrow. I forgot what time I told her. I'm like, come back tomorrow and we will do something. So I had to put something together. So called a few people and I said, hey, let's let's go into the cemetery and I'll show y'all how to gather some dirt. There was a cemetery that was close to where I was living at the time where a witch was buried. And I'm like, hey, let's go gather some dirt from the witch's cemetery. Great. You know. It'd be instructional and be kind of fun. So I told everybody, dress in dark clothing because, <laughs> because we go into the cemetery at night. <clears throat> and the cemetery in question was only mostly public. So what we were doing was only mostly legal. Mostly legal. So <laughs> we gathered together. Um, I had a friend of mine who wasn't going to take part. But, you know, they she they were they were going to drive. So we all piled in a, into the SUV, drove us to the area. We got out. The lady who had just showed up at the at the crib was I mean, she was dressed like a ninja. I mean, I had on dark clothing, but I mean, she was I was like, you know, you know, you done pull some capers before. So but we got out, you know, my friend pulled off. We walked through the woods, got to the cemetery. Gained entry, and um, well, before we gained entry, I'd had everyone bring nine cents. So we got to the gate. Um, we we prayed. 
again, we anointed, just like in the previous story, anointed ourselves with Florida water and um, holy water. <clears throat> Told the spirit at the gate, hey, this is, this is who I am. Everyone introduced themselves that we're going to go in. I'm not going to disturb anyone. We're not going to desecrate anything. We're going to come right back out. Okay. Didn't get anything negative. So we all took the nine pennies. We dropped them at the gate. We had another set of nine pennies and we made entry. We get in there and it's a, it's a very small cemetery, which makes what happens so odd. So we get in there <clears throat> and we make our way to where the witch reportedly buried. Um, left an offering of, uh, I believe it was rum and cigars. Hmm, okay. I don't know if y'all heard that weird noise. But anyway, left an offering of rum and cigar. Everybody gathered dirt, uh, put it in little, little pouches, and we decided to go exploring. I don't know why. Now I know why what happened happened because what well, you said specifically, we're going to go in and come back out. We decided to go sightseeing. So we're going because it was a very old cemetery and, you know, we had like small flashlights because when you're doing stuff like this, you don't want great big high beams. OK, small flashlights. We're looking at the dates and names on the graves, wondering who all was black and who wasn't and <laughs> stuff like that. And then we're like, OK, time to make our way out, guys. We turned to where we thought we'd come in and. No, long story short, that that the, the wall was solid. So that, that was not the entry point. And we're like, huh, this is weird. So we go to another location where we were. And remember, this is a small cemetery. So we go to another location that looked like where we had made entry. Wrong. <laughs> the, it, it's still a solid wall. That is not where we came in. And I'm like, I know. So we're keeping our cool. But still, we're walking around this small cemetery and we cannot find the point in which we made entry. At one point, we were, and it, it was a gate. Some parts were a wall, some parts were a gate. And um, so, as you would think, that would make it easy for us to find out where we'd gotten in. No, but we were in front of a gated portion of it, and there were shadows on the other side of the gate. And it's like, uh, who who that is? Shine the light. Nobody. Just shadows. Like, all right, y'all. Um, we're gonna piece up out of here. Let's just walk along the fence instead of cutting across, because that's further disturbing people. Because when you're operating at night, you don't know if you're actually stepping on somebody. So we're like, let's just walk around the fence. We're bound to see it. We made three laps around the place because it's a small cemetery before we found the gate. And at this point, I'm getting a little worried because it's getting later and you always want to be out of a cemetery by 3 a.m. You always want to be out by 3 a.m. because you get there's a high likelihood of you not leaving if you are caught in there by 3 a.m. <clears throat> so I'm like, all right, let's get out here. We found the um we found our exit. And of course, you know, being a gentleman, ladies first, let them out, let everybody out. And the feeling of dread that I had as everybody shimmied at our exit point, <laughs> it felt like the cemetery was closing in. And I'm like, man, y'all need to hurry up. And of course, Murphy's Law says, whenever something can go wrong, it will. I promise y'all every bit of clothing, book bag stuff was getting snagged as they were leaving. And it couldn't have lasted more than a couple of minutes. But for, for me, it felt like an eternity because it was already dark. But there was, it wasn't a full moon, but there was enough of a moon where we could see without the flashlights. But it was getting darker and darker and darker coming towards me. And it's funny because... You know, of course, I'm the last one out. And as I come out of the exit point, everyone is just standing there. And I'm like, what's wrong? They were like, it, it seemed like something was, was coming towards you. And I, of course, I'm like, ha, y'all ain't getting me. Y'all tried to get me. Y'all ain't getting me. And we cleansed ourselves again. 
left the second set of nine cents. Pay your way in, pay your way out. And then we left. So rule of thumb, when you're going into a cemetery, always pay your way in and out. The only exception to that rule is if you are actually going to visit a family member or you're going to a funeral. See, you have business at that point. You have a reason to be there. But if you just go, even if you're just sightseeing, you know, pay your way in, pay your way out. You know, you're, you're visiting their home. Look, shoot, you come to my house, you're going to pay your way in. <laughs> Maybe not out, but you're going to pay your way in. But that was, um, that was that cemetery story. And I'd gone back there several times and I'm still, I'm still like just amazed at how small a cemetery is. And I'm like, how do we get lost in there? Like, but it's it's been known to happen. And if you are going to be in a cemetery and it's going to be close to 3 a.m., wear a digital watch. Do not wear the analog watch because they will stop that sucker every time trying to catch you in there. So, yeah, that was that. The second story that I want to tell you guys had to do with another love case situation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, a fellow fellow had come to the house. He'd call first, and I set up an appointment because he wanted to come by the house. And, you know, he wanted a love spell done. And... You know, he's like, I've been to this one, been to that one, blah, blah, blah. He explained the situation. It was totally his fault. He done dogged the poor girl. But, you know, I, I'm like, eh, no. Nah. He was like, huh? I was like, nah, bro. Like, one, you've been to a bunch of different workers and nobody was able to help you? No. Nah. I'm not one to beat on my chest and be like, I, look, I'm, I'm the worker of last resort. Even though a lot of times I am. I don't know why the spirits have done that to me. Um... It seems like I get the folks who've been to everybody else. So not only are you like lacking of faith by that point, but you broke too. So, uh, <laughs> so it's two things I had to contend with. But I um, if there's nobody whose situation is so bad that nobody can help you, so that that was red flag number one. Red flag number two is I did divination and the spirits were like, nah, like, we ain't going to help with this. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, nah, bro. And so he was like, okay, well, fine. Well, can you help with this job situation? I'm like, bet I can help with that. Okay. The spirits like, cool. I was okay with it. So fine. Did that work. And we did a couple of other workings for him. and over you know it was always we cleared up this situation probably you still ain't gonna do that love case no we clear up that situation probably still, no we clear up another situation probably you still don't do this love no absolutely not and so again i'm sitting at the house chilling knock on the door and it's him i'm like he's like i mean you could tell he, he, he was a big dude too big big dude tall and big yoked up big big swole dude and he was like you tell he been crying he had a suitcase of beer and i was like come on in my friend take a load off tell prophet what's, what's going on with you and he was like he said it and I was like, man you know i went by her place and there was another dude there and blah 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 I said man you didn't do nothing you were supposed to do did you he was like, oh, man. I mean, he's a big old dude just crying. I, I, I was like, man, you, you need something to drink. So I was like, man, go in that cabinet, pour you, pour, you, pour you a stiff drink. And he got a water glass. And I was like, whoa, Kimosabi? Shoot. Let me get my glass. So he just take two big swaps. Well, he was like, whew. Oh, prophet, I've been drinking gin all day. I'm like, man, give me your glass then. What you doing? Shoot. Yeah, man, you better pop. <laughs> been drinking all day. And that's another thing. Like, when someone is that amped up, it, no, no, it's a pump your brakes. Pump your brakes. So he had um gone by her place, saw another dude, gotten, up, gotten upset over it. 
and, you know, eventually calmed him down, prescribed him a, a spiritual bath. He took it with him. And that was that. A month later, he met someone new. This time, he wasn't he wasn't dogging, being a gentleman. L- a little while later, contacted me. They were married. And I'm like, man, congratulations. Right. So the point of that story is. One, always do divination first, just because you know how to do something doesn't mean you should do it. And I know as people, um, people, a lot of people come to hoodoo or they come to Palo or they come to voodoo or they come to like one of the Orisha practices out of a need. Something has happened. There's been some traumatic point in their life. And they're like, listen, like, like, just help me. Sometimes you miss out on your prince or your princess by chasing that frog. And not saying this, the first young lady was a frog by any means. Okay. The, he was the one that fought in that situation. But had he gotten back with her, who knows what would have happened. Um, he was still in the wrong mindset. Things would have gone sour. And he would have missed. And last I checked, you know, they're still married and they've got a youngin, you know, so always do divination and yeah, don't rush to do work just because you know how to do something doesn't mean you should do it. What in the world? I don't know if the camera, the microphone picked that up, but um, something was slithering. But, um, yeah, with that being said, guys, you know, <clears throat> there's a blessing in every lesson. So hopefully you learn something from these two stories and hope you are also entertained. Thank you all so much for tuning in. You know, run them likes up for me. Run them donations. You know, the cash app is going to be right there. Or is it going to be right there? I don't know. We'll see. It's going to be down there. Cash app or Venmo. Or, you know, if you don't want to just sow a few seeds, then come to the webinar. You'll get something from it. All right. Thank y'all so much for being here. And um, see you next go round. And I'm thinking after we get done with this webinar, two weeks after that, we'll do bone reading. Or just general divination. I don't know. Whichever was number two on the poll. But we'll go there. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Profit out.